You just didn't have any ambition. You didn't have any uh, feelings of you want to get out and do stuff like we used to. And that uh, it was just you're you're worn out. You might as well say. And it, one thing led to another, and and we come up and saw Dolly, and he explained to us what was going to happen, and we said, let's go for it and do it. So. I wonder if he was the one I told you, yeah, if you got time this afternoon, why don't we do it? You know, he kind of said no. <laughs> Dennis is a, a very pleasant 74-year-old gentleman who was referred to us uh, by a colleague of mine at Park Nicollet Hospital. Uh, he was initially seen there because he had been having worsening shortness of breath and was seen by a pulmonologist and also referred to a cardiologist because he was found to have severe aortic stenosis. Um, severe aortic stenosis is essentially a tightening of the aortic valve, which is the main valve that the heart pumps blood through to the rest of our body. And as that becomes stenosed or narrowed as we age, uh, patients can start developing symptoms of shortness of breath, chest discomfort, and even uh, lightheadedness or passing out. Now, Dennis started getting symptoms uh, mostly of shortness of breath. What was complicating the picture is that he also has a lot of other medical problems, including diabetes, atrial fibrillation, and pretty severe chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or emphysema. The question was whether or not uh, how much of his symptoms were being caused by his emphysema versus uh, the aortic stenosis. Uh, the pulmonologist did an excellent job treating his uh, emphysema with inhalers and in fact his pulmonary function studies, which we use to measure um, the lung function, actually improved slightly uh, with therapies. However, his symptoms continue to get worse. And that really was more suggestive that a large part of his symptoms was also from the aortic stenosis. Because of his medical problems, he was felt to be very high risk for traditional open heart surgery. And in fact, that's common in uh, this population. About 30 to 40% of our patients with severe aortic stenosis are felt to be too sick or not candidates for traditional surgical aortic valve replacement. And that's why uh, we developed this technology uh, across the U.S. here and in, in Europe where we're able to replace the aortic valve either going from a small uh, incision in the, in the groin area through their femoral artery or by going through the side of their chest wall with a mini uh, parasternotomy, which we call it. Um, we saw uh, Dennis in our valve clinic uh, together with my colleagues uh, from the CV surgery department, Dr. Teske and Dr. Castro, and we all felt that he would be very high risk for a traditional uh, aortic valve replacement. Fortunately, with all our testing, he was found to be a very good candidate for uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, otherwise known as TAVR. This is actually what the valve looks like. Um, as you can see here, the valve is basically built on a stent structure instead of a sewing ring like we'd have in a surgical valve. And on the inside of that, there is a, a valve sewn into there made out of uh, bovine or cow pericardium tissue in a way it's very similar to what we do for surgical valves. This valve, you can see, is uh, the size that it is expanded to in the body, but the way we get it through a femoral artery or a very small uh, location is by crimping this down on top of a balloon, and then we're able to go in there, deliver it, and deploy the valve. And, of course, we're a little bit on the scared side what to do, if to go through it or not, because it was explained to us what could happen, and you know some of the stuff you don't like, but uh, you know what's going to happen if you don't do it, too. So. After the testing, it was kind of um, a no-minder decision of that he had to go through with the procedure. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah. without it, he probably wouldn't be with us real long time. After talking to four cardiologists and Dr. Dolly, well, we knew we had to do it then. They told me the operation was a good, successful operation, and I felt really good. There, just gave me another day. Another year, another 10 years, who knows? <laughs>